Hello, my name is Andrew Mercer, and today we're going to be changing the fork oil on the on this front forks of a 1977 RD400. And this technique can be applied to many different motorcycles. Check your manual, your service manual, and it should give you some ideas. But I think that what we're going to do here today, you can apply to most of the vintage motorcycles out there, especially from the 70s and 80s. Okay, so there are two parts that uh, that we need to uh, tackle on this uh, on this job of changing the oil on the forks. Uh, we need to uh, be aware of this top bolt up here on the top of your forks. So you want to find that. Okay, that's one. And the other part you're going to need to find is this drain plug right here. So in this case, in this case in the Yamaha RD400, it's a um, it's a Phillips screw, but on other motorcycles. It's, uh, it's a different part. So, but this is what we need to find, the drain plug on the bottom of your forks. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to release this plug on the bottom of your fork that's going to let all the oil drain out. So have a drip pan, as you can see underneath I have here, um, have a drip pan underneath because the oil will come out and it will make a big mess. Don't lose this screw. It takes longer than I thought. Oh, lost it down the oil pan. Oh, always happens. Now I got to go fishing. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the uh, the top bolt on top of the um, on top of the forks. That's this one right here. Now, when you go to remove this one, I will give you a little warning. Don't, don't uh, use vice grips or anything foolish on it. Try to use good size wrenches for this. Um, it's a little tight fit, but uh, you want to use the proper wrenches. This actually takes a 22 millimeter socket, which is not, which not what I'm going to use. But if I, you notice on the edges of the bolt, somebody's already used some other things on it that haven't been correct and they've damaged the bolt already. So my socket actually doesn't fit all the way down over very easily down over the um, top of the bolt. Now an easier way to do this of course would be to remove the handlebars but I'm just trying to do this quickly. I, I don't want to go removing the handlebars so we're going to try to do it without, without going that step. <clears throat> now I'm finding this to be really hard, really tight. So I'm going to show you a little trick next on how to get a little bit of extra leverage using your ordinary sockets. Okay, now if my socket arm was three feet long, I would probably have no trouble trying to get this uh, this uh, bolt off, but I can't because it's I don't get I can't get enough leverage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this wrench and the handle of my uh, ratchet. So here's what I do. Now this is kind of like a Rubik's cube kind of thing, so you might need to play with it a little bit. Let me just show you how this works. I would I'm going to put the the wrench into the handle of the socket. And it'll wedge in there like that, you see? And if I push on it the right way, it gives me a longer handle. You see, it's, it's almost like a longer handle. So it's a little bit of a trick. So I'm going to do that now. I had to do it on the other side as well, by the way. So here I go. I'm fitting it on there. You can see now I have my, my wrench uh, with the end of the box. Uh, put onto the end of my ratchet so it's ready to turn. Now I'm going to keep a lot of pressure on up here because, I, because I'm using a long extension it can get a little bit out of shape so I want to try to be careful and I'm also very careful with my tank. You want to be very careful when you're doing all this stuff. So here I go. Still not coming yet. There you go. Did it. Now, I've never been able to do that with just the standard ratchet. I, I would definitely have to do something. So, so there you go. So now it's going. It's coming loose. Now now that I got to loosen up, I got to talk to you about the danger in this one. Now, there's a serious, serious thing to consider when you're taking apart this, the front forks on any motorcycle. This fork down here has springs in it, as you probably already know. So the springs are under pressure because the weight of the bike is on it, and well, they're compressed anyway. When they're put together, they're compressed. So really if you took the cover, you took that top cover off this fork, the top cover keeps the, spin, the, the, uh, the springs tightened. 
So by removing this top cover, the springs can actually slide right on up through the um, the uh, the fork tube. Now I have to tell you, I, the first time I ever did this in my life, the cap hit the ceiling of the garage. Okay, like this cap that I'm taking off, it actually hit the ceiling of the garage. So please, please, please be very careful with this. Okay, so I'm keeping a lot of pressure down on top of this ratchet with my hand as I'm turning. A lot of pressure, and that's so that if the if the, the, the cap comes loose, if it does actually end up coming loose to the tread, my hand is there to catch it. Okay? Now, I'm up so far now that I can't actually, if I did get it loose, I wouldn't be able to get my ratchet off to get the cap off. So now I'm going to stop using my ratchet, I'm going to go to a wrench. Now I've said before, I don't have a fancy uh, garage, like say somebody like a Jay Leno or something like that. But I do have a few wrenches and things, but for this one here, I don't have a 22 millimeter um, box wrench. So I'm actually going to use it, I have, I have a really nice um, um, a thumb wrench, so I'm going to use that instead. And I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to damage the, um, the, uh, the, the, the bolt, the cap. So uh, now I wouldn't actually start my loosening of the uh, of the cap with this wrench because it just wouldn't have it doesn't have enough precision to be able to uh, protect the uh, the treads. So now as I'm doing this, now I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this very carefully. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a glove. I'm going to put my glove over the the um, the the, rent, the bolt uh, the cap, and so then as I as I, um, if it happens to come loose, it's not going to fly away. My, my, my glove will protect the bike and me when, the, uh, when I reach the end of the treads on this, on this bolt. So I'm going to really carefully do that. There's probably other ways to do it that are probably safer. And if you do know of a safer way, then do it that way. Oh, it just let go. And it nipped my finger too when it did. But it got me on the pinky. So um, this thing lets go pretty f with a lot of force, so you want to be very careful. I'm glad I have my glove there. Okay, so here's the cap. That's what it looks like. And you can see somebody's already done some work on it already. It's, it's pretty marred there on the edges. It's too bad. I think what happened is probably somebody, by the looks of it, somebody had some vice grips on it. And because it was probably stuck and they couldn't get it apart. That's too bad. So what I'm going to do now is I'll clean this up with a rag and uh, maybe a little toothbrush or something and clean it up. Clean up the little o-ring, make sure it's tidy. So now you can see we have oil coming out of the bottom of the um, of the fork. Okay, so my parts manual, or sorry, my service manual here tells me that I need 145 milliliters of uh, fork oil in this in this system to for these forks to work. Now this is a really ticklish, important part. You need to make sure you have exactly the right amount of oil. Uh, if you don't, your the the uh, the shocks will will respond differently from one side to the other, and they won't be balanced. It can do some serious uh, uh, damage to your forks. So I'm going to measure out, uh, and as you can see here, I have um, very um, scientific uh, um, uh, uh, instruments here for measuring. So I'm going to measure out uh, 145 milliliters of fork oil. 